Hey folks, welcome back to another review with yours truly, Sam Healy. And uh, today I'd like to take a look at this little gem. Uh -huh, see what I did there? Uh, I've talked about this game a lot. Now, if you know anything about me, you know I am not an abstract strategy game player uh, at all, really. This is one of the games, however, that I truly enjoy, and it is most definitely an abstract strategy game uh, where you have these different shapes uh, that are, are comprised of a number of gems, and you are trying to place them onto the board in their varying shapes and sizes. And the person who does it the best, who places the most gems on the board by the end of the game, uh, wins. So let's take a look at it and we'll talk about what you think afterwards. So here I have a four player version of Gemblow set up for you. Now, uh, the components may have changed. This is probably one of the, uh, not original, original of course, but it's probably one of the older editions because uh, I've had this since it came out. So component quality may have changed over time, so keep that in mind. But uh, basically, the way Jimbo plays is that each player has the same number of shapes and the same number of gems at the beginning of the game. And uh, basically, each shape is one of these guys. So this one has one, two, three, four, five gems on it. And, uh, whereas, and this one also has five gems and you have all these different kinds of weird shapes that you can play all the way down to a piece that is just simply a single gem. And what you're trying to do is you're trying to get as many of your gems on this board as you possibly can before you cannot place any more pieces. Now that might seem easy. I guarantee you it is not. <laughs> uh, I don't think I have ever fit all of my, my gems onto the board uh, at any given time. I, I have seen it done, but I have not done it, and uh, it is very difficult. Now, how do you place gems on the board? Well, it's quite simple. First of all, if you look at the board, it has this different kind of uh, pattern on it where you have all of these little shapes in here. For a four-player game, the corner of the board here has a little four in it, you can see that. And then if you follow that row all the way over, here's another four. So one player will start from this point, and another player will start from this point, and then third player will start here, and fourth player will start here. And the player area, the play area is the square in between those four points. So anywhere in this square here, where you see those little uh, icons, so to speak, or these hexes, you are able to play within that area. So, as we begin the game, you have to start from your corner. So, uh, green player will start right there. And so in similar fashion, red player will start. Maybe they choose something like this. And then blue player will say, you know what, I'm gonna be even more different and go like so. And then purple player says, you know what, I'm going for straightness. And so as we are putting more pieces on the board, now we have to follow certain rules. The first placement was very simple. It has to start from there, stay within the uh, boundaries and go from there. But now you have to be able to connect to your color by one spine of a hex. So for example, I could put this guy right here just like this because it is connected by one spine of a hex. Three spines, bad. Two spines, bad, can't do that. But something like this is okay because there is only ever one connection between the two pieces. There are actually three spines, but there is still just one connection between a spine, okay? So that's the different rules. So let's say we go like this. And so game would continue.
So now you can begin to see how when you place certain objects, you have to be very, as the game progresses, you have to be very uh, original <laughs> with your placement because now you have to start figuring how you're going to be getting more playments, uh, more playing pieces in between your other places because while I have all this room over here, it's going to run out pretty soon because I'm sharing this room with red and I'm sharing this room with red and purple now. So I'm going to try to break through some of these other sides so that I can try, try and uh, score some more points. So we can start with things like maybe this right here where I'm connected by one spine here, but I'm wrapped around this piece. So now that I can, I can play over here, and then I could also come off of this spine right here and come over here. Now, there are situations where you will be able to jump across a seemingly blocked line row of hexes. Okay, so as the game has progressed here, we see that green looks like they are backed into a corner right here. It doesn't look like there's anywhere other than this way that you can go. But if you, if there are two separate pieces, like right here, these two pieces are separate pieces, there is an open spine right there that you can actually slip through on. So I could actually do something like that absolutely legally because this is one piece, this red V looking piece here, and this blue piece here are two separate pieces. And there is a spine that is showing right there that it is not covered up that I can use to jump across. So it's little nuances like that that you have to keep your eye open for so that you can utilize the best spaces on the board. So that's basically how the game of Jimbo, Jim Blow would play. Uh, basically, the rounds would continue until every person has passed, not being able uh, to place any more gems onto the board. And once that happens, the number of gems that everybody has left is counted, and the person who has the lowest number of gems left is the winner. For example, this one would be worth four. Four, one. Okay, so you would count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and whoever has the lowest number after that wins. And if that's not varied enough for you, that's just the base game version, they also include these special cards. At least in this version of the game, there are special cards where you can play them on your turn and you can break a rule of the game, for example. So it, normally you cannot be touching your uh, color, but here, the Unification 3, you would be able to place a tile that has a connection on just three spaces. All right, um, there are other ones that allow you to not go on just one spine, but two spines. So you can jump a hex and place there. So these special cards are here. Here's one where you can advance two hexes and then place. So these special cards are ways that you kind of uh, spice up the game a little bit. It provides a little bit more replayability and adds this uh, almost a, not really, but almost like a take that mechanism to it. So it's actually a really neat game. One of my favorite abstract strategies to play. So let's get to uh, my thoughts. Now, one of the things that I really enjoy about Jimblo is the fact that it is colorful and vibrant. Uh, one, of my, one of my main complaints about a lot, not all, of course, I know that there's some out there, but a lot of abstract strategy games are also abstract in their color. And uh, it's like blacks and whites and browns and, and tans and wood pieces. And, you know, they're all nice, I guess, but it, they just don't look very cool. Um, but Jimblo does. Jimblo has that pop that... Uh, uh, is lacking in a lot of abstract strategy games, and I like all the color that's in it. 
I like the back and forth that uh, players can interact with uh, throughout the game, where you're trying to uh, w wiggle your way around this way, but then they see that you're trying to do that, so they place a, a piece that blocks you off, but then you find that little bridge that you can pop over into in another area, and that's the kind of thing that I like. It, it's almost a... Uh, um, a hybrid flowing of, of different kinds of mechanics, different kinds of strategies and tactics that are in this game that I truly enjoy. The fact that it can also play as a solitaire game where you make some of the puzzles uh, that come inside the game, that's neither here nor there for me. If I play a game, I usually want to play a game with somebody else, uh, not with myself. Um, <clears throat> so there is that. So uh, as abstract strategy games go, Jimblo gets two big thumbs up this has had a place on my shelf ever since it came out uh, a while ago because uh, we, we were in Korea when this came out and uh, it was around 2005 and very soon after that we started playing it and we loved it. Uh, the, the, the original version was a huge board. It was, um, I, I guess, maybe uh, about this tall, uh, the board itself, and it had bigger pieces that were thicker and a little bit well, um, well made. The components on this one, the reason I picked this one up is because it was more compact. Still the same game, just smaller, and uh, the, the components were still good, uh, as you saw. Uh, nice, durable plastic, and just really went well. And I love how those pieces kind of click into place. And if it doesn't click into place, you can't place it there. Really love this game. Two huge gem piles up for Gem Blow. Go check it out. Always try before you buy. See you on the flip side, folks. Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews as well as our top-rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com. You can also find other great shows at Dicetowernetwork.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Cool Stuff, Inc., where you can find great games for great prices. Cool stuff in stock. Check them out at CoolStuffInc.com.